last class recording, I forgot to take, you know, let you guys turn off the video so that recording was open. I could really. Um, Mister. Yes. It's Kalilea Avila. I was downstairs. That's why I didn't say here. Yeah, they told me. They told me. Oh, okay, okay. No worries. Okay, thank you. They told me you were in the bathroom, though. Yeah, I was downstairs in the bathroom. Okay. <laughs> All right, so let's begin. All right, so today we're going to be doing two rules. No, not rules. One is a theorem, the other is a rule. Whatever you want to call it, it doesn't matter. So take careful notes. And then I want to go ahead and also review a box and whisker problem and uh, maybe talk about skews, maybe a little bit. Um, and that's pretty much it. So let's get going. Hopefully we can cover this quickly. We have lunch at 1130. I'm starving. So we can get it done. I think we can. And then I, I think I'm going to eat some Taco Bell today. No. <laughs> no. What about Subway? Now that's good, mister. Yeah, I think that's better. Yeah. So I can go for the, I'm going to go for the chicken today. And I, I got to sell proposal. I got I to gotta take a proposal to a customer today. I have to adjust another one. I got to make the, I gotta make another proposal. And so if I can get my running in at night, then I would have a successful day and maybe like play a video game with, with the girls at home. So. Mister, is there people in your class? There are two individuals in class. Oh. We got Nicole and Liam. Not Leo, right? Liam. Liam, like Liam Neeson. Like the guy who nobody wants to go to his movies now because he was, he said something. Anyways, I'll still go to his movies. Anyway, all right, so empirical rule. Sixty-eight. 95, 99.7 rule. Sometimes it's called the 6895, 99.7 rule. Empirical rule. This applies, this applies to bell-shaped distributions. Now let me be clear, there's a lot, there's bell shapes, but let's say bell shapes approximately normal or normal distributions okay and so here's the here's how a bell-shaped distribution looks like or a normal distribution or approximately normal something like that and um let's say the mean here is 50. so the mean in the middle obviously is 50 and it's symmetrical on both sides and sigma is 10. Let's say a standard deviation here is 10. Okay. So now, now like around here or so on each side, it could be a little bit lower, whatever. These are called your inflection points. Inflection points. So points and make another area. That's when you have a change in concavity or curvature. Like here we have negative curvature, and then it goes positive. And, and if you go here, this positive curvature, negative. There's this point here where there's a change, and that always occurs at one standard deviation away from the mean in either direction. So this is one sigma. This is negative one sigma. So can somebody here tell me what value would be here? If we had sigma is 10, what value would be here? If this is one standard deviation away and this is 50, what would this be? How much is how much is one sigma? 10. So 50 plus 10 is 60. Yeah. And how, what are, what are, what would it be over here? 40. 40. These two values are one sigma away, are one standard deviation away from the mean. Okay? Now, this rule will tell me that 
from here to here, there will be 68% of the data will be contained within those two intervals. That's what empirical rule says. What's, what's the point? Yeah, we might be interested in, in the probability, for example, of values within that range. And since this, by the way, this shape here is the most important shape in all this class. It's like the point of this class, basically. Some people might say, oh, that's not true. Oh, no, this is like, this is it. Okay. By the way, if this is symmetrical, how much is it from here to here? How much would that be? Yes, 16 divided by 2. So it'd be, uh, you know, I'll write, it, I'll write it on the top. It'll be 34. It'll be 34. So from here to here is 34%. And here to here is 34% by symmetry. So you take 16 divided by 2. Repeat. So from here to here, one standard deviation away from the mean. Or within one standard deviation from the mean, you have 68%. But this piece from here to here, half and half, will be 34 and 34, because 34 plus 34 is 68, 68 divided by 2. Does that make sense? Got it. Good. Now, let's say we go another sigma. So now we're two sigma away from the mean. First of all, what would this value here be? What would this one be? 70? 60 plus 10 more. Oh. I don't know why. Okay. 60 plus 10 is 70. What about over here? 30. 30, yes. So by the time we get to 2 sigma, within 2 sigma, how much percent do you think we're going to have? The hint's in the name. 95%. Now there's something that I'm not I'm not emphasizing. The word about, I need to emphasize this. We say about 95% of the data lies within two standard deviations. About 68% lies within one standard deviation. That's a very important word to emphasize here. Now, could we figure out from here to here what percent is going to be there? What will you do? Well, you would take 95, subtract 68. What's 15 minus 8? Oh, well, it is 7. And what's 8 minus 6? 27. Because we borrowed 1, right? And then we have to take 27 and divide it by 2, right? And that's 13.5. So this here, this little piece here is 13.5%. And this little piece here is 13.5%. Agree? We're good? Does everybody understand how we got the 13.5? Yes. Good, good, good. Now, by the time we get to three sigma, all the way out here, practically all the distribution. First of all, what number would this be here? 80. And this guy over here? 20. So by the time we get all the way out here, what percent do you think it's going to be? 99.7. We would say about 99.7% of the distribution lies within three sigma. Now we can figure out this little piece here, how much it would be. And this little piece, how much it would be. Right, we would take 99.7 minus 95. That's 4.7, and then we take 4.7 divided by 2, which is 2.35. So this guy here 
is 2.35% from here to here. And this guy will be 2.35%. So look how much we're doing with this empirical rule. And do I expect you to memorize it? Yeah, for this class, you can memorize it. What? It's not that bad. Excuse me, what if we have like really, really bad memory? Like, how does that work? How do we just no. imprint that in our brains? No, no, no. Let me tell you, you got great memory. You're talking to me now. You memorize words. I, I, I bet you, you know at least 200 words. I'm a robot. That's why. So I can't see. You'll be fine. Don't worry. Once you once you play around with this a little bit, you do some practice, you should memorize it for like a month or two weeks, and then you'll forget it. It doesn't matter. Just know it for the test if I give you a test on it. Don't worry. That's just, do you understand so far what I've done? Yeah, but wait, did you just say test? Don't worry about it. Oh my God. I don't think I'll be testing you guys until you're in phase three. Fair enough? Yeah. Fair enough. Because I know charge. Until what? Until phase three, and we don't know when that happens. Let's see. Don't worry, no stress. Don't. You're, you're at home right now, chill. All right. I'm yelling yes, at you. Yes. I can't read the arrows. Like, all right, so there's like four arrows. <laughs> all right. Um, yeah. Uh, which arrow? Uh, the two middle ones. These guys? That one and the one on. This is 34 from here to here. From here to here is 34. And on uh, under it? From here to here, 68. Okay. From here to here, it's 95. From here to here, it's 13.5. From here to here, it's 13.5. From here to here, it's 2.35. I know it's getting kind of crowded. Now, there's one more part here that we're not talking about, but from here to forever, for infinity that way, and from here to infinity that way, so from beyond three standard deviations, what's left over? Well, the whole curve is 100. If we subtract 99.7, what do we get? Well, we get 0.3. We take 0.3 and divide it by 2, get 0.15. So each of these is 0.15%. And I know it's super proud and let me erase all of this here. This is 0.15% to infinity that way. And this here would be also 0.15%. And that's your empirical rule. Remember, it only applies to bell-shaped Normal distributions, approximately normal distributions. Does it always go up to infinity? Well, in theory, goes up to infinity. Usually, questions won't be doing that. But for instance, if I ask you from here to infinity, then you should know that there's 0.15 left over. You know? So I say greater than 60. Well, greater than 60 is going to be 13.5 plus 2.35 plus a 0.15. That's why we should remember. Mister, I need to go. I have to go to the eye doctor. Okay, be careful. Okay, bye. How does that work now? So, is she supposed to like get a few naps? Like, it was school right now. Like, if it's school now, like, I gotta go to the eye doctor. I can't just let you go. I gotta get I, the office. I just call you and they gotta sign you out. So, okay. I don't even know who it was because I wasn't paying attention. I don't know people's voices. Okay, so there. Now, I want to, while I'm doing this, I want to go ahead and talk about z score. There's a concept called z score. And of course, I don't know how to spell it. Z score. So take a look at this formula. That's a formula. That's like one of the most important formulas you have in class. 
it says take your x, subtract your mean, divide by sigma, and you get a z score. A z score, instead of me telling you right now what it is, I want to go ahead and perform some of the calculations using the little, what we have right now. Give me one second, guys, and it always happens. Uh, Mister, is that a six or a B? Hello? Steven? It's a sigma, Lucas. Hey. All right, thank you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. 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 All right, so which one was it? Is the, where, 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 which one do you need to see? Which one, which one do you need? Uh, no, I got it. All right, so let's take a look at 60. This is an X. 60, what's my mean? 50, what's my sigma? 10, all right? So what's 60 minus 50? 50, uh, so it's 10 divided by 10, which is one. One, that's one standard deviation away. Okay, let's try 70. 70 minus 50 divided by 10. That's 20 divided by 10, which is two. That's two standard deviations away. Let's try 30 over here. 30 minus 50 divided by 10. 30 minus 50 is negative 20 divided by 10, which is negative two. Negative two standard deviations. And that way, what the z-score is, z-score tells us how many standard deviations we are from our mean. It comes in handy because can you imagine being here at 63? See, our rule will give that to us. Our empirical rule doesn't take care of that for us. But if we did a z-score for 63, it'd be an easy calculation, right? 63 minus 50, that's 13 divided by 10. That's 1.3. That's 1.3 standard deviations away from our mean. Obviously, we have a different sigma and we have a different mean then we'll have different x's that we can figure out how what particular x is away from the mean how far away is it from the mean or how many standard deviations we're away from our mean so that's z score may i erase this or are you still copying okay Okay. May I erase or good? It would be nice to get okay. it before lunch. Yeah. Can I erase? Yeah. No, we may do some practice problems after lunch. And but yeah, I think I think we should take a break. I, I mean you're gonna eat all the food, right? If you can. Like thirty minutes, right? Yeah. Yeah, thirty minutes. Only thirty minutes. 
not not fun or whatever. Like 20 minutes in the line. Well, hopefully because there's less kids. All right, Chef Chefs. Here's what this next rule is called. Chef Chefs. Chef Chefs theorem. So let's talk about this rule. First of all, this applies to any distribution. Any distribution. And it's not about, we use a word, at least. That's the key word here, at least. This is fifth period, right? Yeah. This is my third time taking it today. Wow. And it has this formula, one minus one over k squared, where k stands for the amount of standard deviations from the mean. So, Let's begin. Now, if you if you know the shape of the distribution is normal, then you don't have to use it. But this this can be used for a normal distribution, but it's at least. So this gives like you'll see, it gives you kind of like a borderline or a, a lower threshold of what it could be. So let's assume that we don't know the shape of the distribution. It could be this. Obviously, we don't know the shape, whatever. So I'll just draw something like this. And I'm doing this as a visual way. So here's our mean. Here's our sigma. Let's just say here's one sigma. I'm not even going to put numbers to it. Here's one sigma. And this is negative one sigma. So our k would equal to one. All right? So we go to our formula and we write in one over one squared. That's one minus one as zero. Chef Chef's theorem says nothing. It says, I don't know. We don't know. We can't make any sort of statement about what occurs by the time you are one standard deviation from the mean. But let's say you push it all the way to two sigma. Chef Chef's theorem has something to say about that. See, when you do 1 over 1 over 2 squared, we have 1 over 1 over 4, which is 3 fourths, which is 0.75. So it says at least 75% of the data lies within 2 sigma of the mean, okay, within 2 sigma of the mean. So this is what k equals to 2. That's what k stands for. It says at least it gives, it gives a threshold of at least 75%. It could be more. I mean, it could be all of it. But it's at least 75 For any shape of any distribution, this is true. By the time you get to three sigma, this is k equal to three. Obviously, in both directions, don't just stay on one side. For k equal to three, we got one minus one over three squared. That's one minus one ninth. That's eight ninths. That's 0.888 forever. That's 88.9%. At least 88.9% of the data will be within three standard deviations. 
It could be more. But at least 88.9. And you keep on going. K equals 4, K equals 5. So this is Chef Chef's thing. We don't pronounce the Y. That's according to a Russian teacher I have in FIU. He corrected all of us. He said, it's not Chevy Chef's. It's Chef Chef's. It's Russian. And I'm like, okay. So last class, we discussed box plots. This class, we discussed Chef Chef's theory and empirical role and z score. So, what I want to do is kind of go over box plots quickly, but not in the mechanism, but interpretation of the box plots. And then I'll go ahead and stop the video and everybody can log off for lunch and then we'll wait till the bell rings and we'll go to lunch. We're very close. And then we'll be back at around 12. Bear with me because the technology is that I have to reset the computer or something like that. So just wait for the new Zoom link after the meeting because I always start a new Zoom link. I never I never use the old one. I should start just keeping a Zoom link open. So let's say you get a box plot that looks like this. We say that the shape of the distribution is probably symmetrical in this case. Because the median is in the middle and it's kind of nice and even. So, like, it doesn't have to be normal, but I guess just so you get an idea of it, you know, you know, something like that. It's nice and symmetrical. But what happens is, if you get something like this, see, our median is over here, and this is elongated. So we got a feeling like maybe, and this is, I have to be very careful, but essentially 50% of your data is over here somewhere, and then the other 50% is like over here. This might not be a very good interpretation of that, but we say this will be like a right skew. Similarly, if you switched it around, I'll break the exaggerated side. It's going to be like a left skew. Now, strictly speaking, you got to look at the whole picture because something like this, some of us might be tempted to say it is right skewed, but really this is, this is symmetrical somewhat. Not perfectly symmetrical, somewhat symmetrical. Yeah, I, I would suggest, don't just look at the median, the second quartile, look at the whole picture. Look at the whole picture. All right, so we'll discuss this more. Let me go ahead and start preparing us for lunch by firstly... Uh,